Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sealed for Good. I'm your host Shandi and today we're going to continue to cover the more significant updates of AES3740 and really try to explain some of the rationale behind the more significant changes. When reading the new standard, one of the evident themes and major differences from the old and the updated version is there is a much higher onus on the correct physical installation of the waterproofing system. This is evident in the new inclusions for pre-installation and post-application checks. One of these pre-installation checks included we'll be focusing on today is the moisture content of substrates. So let's look at this detail more closely. Referencing point 4.3.3 moisture content, the moisture content in the substrate shall be a measured prior to the membrane application and b suitable for the particular membrane system installed so why is measuring moisture content of a substrate important it's important because excessive moisture in a substrate can be detrimental to the waterproofing system and can cause the following prolonged or retarded curing prevention of full curing Reemulsification of the membrane when subject to flood testing, membrane tackiness associated with affected curing, membrane delamination, blistering, microbial growth under the membrane. So why the inclusion into the new standard? Two suggestions as to why it has been included in the new standard are as follows. A, to improve the standard of waterproofing installation in general, and bring it into line with other flooring applications where there is a heavy emphasis and requirement for moisture testing. B, risk mitigation. Now, if you recall last week, we took an in-depth look at the new standards requirements for waterproofing over substrates with falls. And if you read the standard, this point immediately precedes moisture content checks. So there's a logical connection for the anticipated influx in the use of screeds used to generate falls in floors. And an increase use and reliance on screeds only increases the potential for issues when it comes to moisture content. And in my experience with product issues, waterproofing over screeds with excess moisture is near the top issue we receive calls on. If you're unsure about the specifics surrounding testing for moisture content on a substrate, don't stress because the updated standard does provide guidance found in Appendix F. This includes methods for in situ destructive probe testing, but these are sometimes considered not practical for a waterproofing contractor. So there is also options for non-destructive surface moisture testing. So what is the acceptable moisture content of a surface in preparation for the membrane application? Environmental and site factors can impact drying times of a substrate. These can be due to surface temperatures, relative humidity, ventilation, subscreed waterproofing, screed design, and many others. As per AES3740, subfloors are suitable for the installation of waterproofing membranes when RH does not exceed 80%, which this generally represents a moisture content of around 5%. Contractors should always refer to the manufacturer's TDS. As a contractor, there's a few practical steps to consider in reducing the risk of membrane failure associated with excess substrate moisture. These include, allow ample drying time of the substrate where possible. Ensure surfaces are checked for moisture levels. Membrane selection based on product's ability to cope with moisture levels or application of moisture and vapour barriers such as Gripset E60 and H2O Primer Plus. In summary, membrane failure associated with excess substrate moisture is a common issue that can be attributed to inexperience and a failure to test and identify potential issues and time constraints. The requirement for substrate moisture testing is a practical way to reduce the frequency of failures and is a timely and necessary inclusion when understanding the relationship between surface falls 
and the likely increase waterproofing over screeded surfaces. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you found this episode informative. Please leave a comment, uh, get in contact with us with our, through our many channels and hope to see you on our next episode. Until then, happy waterproofing.